This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good morning to everybody. Thank you for joining us on a very wet uh, sunrise safari here at uh, Juma. My name is uh, Cedric and behind the camera with me on Rusty we've got uh, Muscles and Paw. So yes it is quite uh, wet this morning. Uh, it's been drizzling the whole morning but that's all right. It's no problem. But anyway I am moving like this now because I'm trying to follow up on uh, Tortoise Pan. I had his tracks coming all the way down on this road and heading straight south. I'm sure he's already crossed over, but I'm just taking a, a chance. You never know, maybe he made a kill during the night. Uh, that male leopard, he might have taken it up into a tree and we could find him that way. But other than that, I'm looking forward to this uh, this drive. Let's see what we're gonna find. Joining us on this morning's uh, sunrise safari on a Wendy, we're gonna have uh, Chad and Panda all the way down in the Eastern Cape in Amakala, Eric and Morgan and our lovely team there in Ravonia, Johannesburg. Our directors for the morning will be Gwyn and Tadiwa and our tech will be um, Lerato and our tech this side is Show Max. This is live, this is an interactive show so if you've got any comments or any questions that you want to send through to us please do so. Make sure that you do register with us on the Wild Earth website to send those comments and questions through or just if you want to chat with us, maybe go onto our hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter, also known as X, or on our YouTube channel. Yes, yes. All right, let's see what we can find for Feline Friday. Feline Friday. Friday Feline. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cannot wait to see if we can pick up on maybe some cat luck here early on. Picasso and Sumi or a dog or two, a wild dog or two. All right, Picasso, yes, anything will go. We are out here for anything, but uh, I'm just following up on Tortoise Pan because I know that I had him yesterday afternoon, last night, had his tracks now coming onto this road. Uh, I'm just going to his typical uh, direction. I'm going to end up going towards uh, a road on our southern boundary called Shabamu Gari Main just to see if he has not crossed over. If he hasn't crossed over there, or south, or anyway south, then uh, you must probably still be on uh, Juma. Anyway, let's go and take a look at uh, the weather at locations this morning. Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here at Amakala Private Game Reserve where you with us live as we are watching some very, very misty weather. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome. My name is Eric, joined by Morgan behind the camera and this morning we're going to be your eyes and ears. And look at this beautifulness. This is amazing. You know, the sun about to come up. A little bit of, of, of cloud on the horizon. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Now, I don't know, partly cloudy. There's not very many clouds, but I'm going to actually touch wood because last time I said it wasn't going to rain, it rained. Mother Nature's playing against me. But this is this is pretty cool. We've got the mist. There is a little bit of a breeze, so it is on the move. Um, I think it's going from north to south, which is generally the opposite direction of which wind normally goes. We normally either get wind from the south or we get wind from the west. 
very little times do we get wind that comes from the north. And if it does come from the north, it normally brings thunderstorms. So north from here would be interior uh, big Karoo. Little Karoo, no? Yeah. Catherine, a lovely sunrise in a deed. I can't wait. I feel it's going to be lovely and warm this morning. Yeah, definitely a warmer morning than it was yesterday. 100%. And uh, I look forward to investigating what has moved around. I want to get back onto that trail of the lions and see maybe they've moved out of that little block of thicket that I thought that they had gone and disappeared into. Um, I'm not too sure when last they had a meal. I'd be quite interested to see what their plan is for this morning before it gets too warm. So I have a feeling if it's going to be clear skies like this, or somewhat clear skies, um, it's definitely going to be very warm. So they're going to want to do all of their business before that. Cookster, Morgan and I were saying to each other, well, he said, this is not Amakala. It doesn't look like Amakala. This looks like somewhere else, you know. This is it. This mist has made it unrecognizable. And there is some thick mist. If you look to the left of the screen, you'll see there's this uh, one mountain that's in between uh, some very, very thick, what look like fingers, <laughs> fingers of mist. Now that is the thicker mist, but it is also higher. So the mist that we're seeing in between us and them is slightly uh, thinner mist. And uh, the thicker mist is definitely the cold mist. So we're going to try and avoid that until the sun burns off because it's very, very cold. Anyway, we're going to move off from here. In the meantime, we're going to send you up to Chad to say good morning. Good luck on your mission this morning for Lions, Eric. And, uh, very good morning to everybody watching this morning and welcome to very overcast and drizzly Juma Private Game Reserve. My name is Chad, on camera we've got Panda and we are out and about this morning to also see if we can maybe catch up with the Nkuhuma Pride. It is a, a little bit chilly this morning, there is some drizzle around but we've come across this beautiful herd of impalas and you can see there are two male impalas that are having a small little tussle with one another. And it is uh, approaching the rutting season here in the Kruger Park. And so, I mean, those two bigger impalas, they, they're not having a full-on fight with one another. They might just almost be sparring one another. All these impalas have started running past us. I haven't heard any alarm calls or anything like that, so they might just be a little nervous because there's lots of, I mean, there's a rain in the air, but there's also lots of wind that might be around. So often you'll find that the impalas like to spend time in the open areas where they feel a little bit safer. And as they run past us, they, they have stopped behind us. And so we're going to head up towards the northern boundary and see if we can maybe find any tracks of the Nkuhuma Pride. They were heading in that direction last night when we, we lost them. Maybe they've caught something and they are still on Juma, but if not, they might have crossed out. But it's always worth a check to see if we are able to find them. You know, last night they were pretty hungry, so they might have moved quite a distance unless they have caught something substantial. Mm -hmm. 
Sherry, good morning to you. I'm also looking forward to today. It's a fantastic day to be out. At least it's not hot. And we are excited to see what we can find. I think that we're going to leave this herd of impalas and we're going to start driving up towards the northern boundary and see if we can maybe find any tracks of those lines. But always a nice way to start the morning by finding a herd of impalas, sitting with them, listening out. All right, so still following up on the male leopard tracks, but now the interesting part, yeah. Now, it, all of a sudden, it seems like it's just got a little bit interesting. Uh, had uh, TP's uh, tortoise pan male leopard, his track's coming from the north-south from where we had him last night. And now we're on Shibami Road, and now we've just got fresh male leopard tracks coming from the south, going north on Shibami Road. So, interesting. So maybe we've got more whitey coming up and tortoise pan coming down. So we're just gonna just uh, work this area a little bit just to see if we can pick up on any of those uh, leopards. Um, so yes, <laughs> this might be interesting. I actually hope not for tortoise pan's sake because it just seems like he's just came out of a, a boxing match. So uh, yeah, let's see.
Look for the hyena. Where's it? Oh, oh, I went that way. All right, well, we've got a hyena. Maybe this hyena is following the male leopard. Very possible. Very possible. Not too sure which hyena. Very difficult to say from where we are now. Let's uh, move down. Uh, Glenn, no more. I see a tip is not related. Sorry. Just. Um... I'm going to check out here quickly. All right. I think I'm going to go to Philemon's cut line and go around that side. Uh, that hyena's already cut straight through. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Something more down this side here. I want to double check on this side. If nothing here, I might end up going towards Trials Dam. Maybe we missed, missed a track or two already here yeah, because I haven't really looked too much on the tracking side. So, let's see. Yeah. Right, let's just go further down Philemon's cut line. All right, let's go to Eric uh, in Amakala to see what's happening down there in the Eastern Cape. What did you do? Right, so as I had thought, this, where we are sitting basically is where I lost the tracks for our lions yesterday afternoon. What you are looking at now is Guapo. He's lying right underneath that tree in the middle of that gap with the bushes. He's looking towards the right and he's got someone else there with him. The whole pride is here, but we've just sat down here because it looked like they were going to start coming down towards us. But... They look like they are very comfortable. So we might take ourselves up there to see if we can't get a little bit closer. But we'll sit here just in case because you know how lions are. They, when they're active, they are active. And it's, very, it's sometimes very difficult to follow up. So we'll sit here for a little bit and see what the movements are, what is going to happen, and then we will act accordingly to their movements. But this is amazing. We have not seen this big boy in, sure. Um, I haven't seen him in quite, we haven't seen him in quite some time. Dina, even me, I love this kitty cat. There we go, he's looking around now. Did he turn around? I think he, you can just see the his snout and the top part of his mane. The fluffy, fluffy bit. Oh, I'm excited to see this boy. Wow. He's been elusive over the last few weeks. We've seen his tracks everywhere. Even on the fence line close to where we stay. We've seen him... I think, I think we saw him in the first... I'm not actually too sure. I think we saw him about four, maybe three weeks ago. 
I think that was the last time that we saw him. And that was when they were on the edge of the basin. They were clearly munching something. And uh, then they started dropping down into the basin. And then that was, I think, the last time we saw him. But look at that color. Wow. Wow. We. Absolutely amazing. What a beautiful start to a Friday morning. Oh, Annie, lions roaring, indeed, indeed. We will get, like I said, we will get a little bit closer and we will investigate and we'll see. I don't know if he's going to be doing any, any roaring now. The reason why I say so is because um, he's already with his pride and normally they will use, I'll apologize for the vehicle in the back there. I'm not too sure exactly what they're doing. It's possible they're moving for the females. I don't know how close they are to Guapo, but I wouldn't get too close. He is a male lion of the roar. And he is the dominant male lion on this, on this part. Well, on this property. There is another male, which is obviously his son. All this movement of the vehicles does make me feel that I think those females could well be getting up and moving. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. still sitting there. I suspect the rest of the family have left. 
Jennifer, indeed, indeed. Guapo is the fair. Sorry, Guapo is the dad and father of all four of those cubs. Um, you, the resemblance actually between him and his cubs is actually it's astounding. Obviously, the male, the young male, looks exactly like him, just a very much smaller version. And then there's two females, two specific females. The biggest cub, a uh, sub-adult, and then the second biggest sub-adult looks like, uh, like uh, him. And the not-so-big one, uh, she looks a little bit more like her mother. Oh, look it. Hello, big boy. Where are you off to? Yeah. Look at him standing in the sun there. Welcome back to Juma, everybody. And we've driven the northern boundary. We drove quite a straight road from camp up to the northern boundary. There was no tracks of the Nkuma Pride. And then we drove along the boundary and we've just come to a waterhole where the Nkuma Pride were on their way to last night to see if we can find any tracks around the water. But we've also found a beautiful pod of hippos that are just resting in the, the water. So we couldn't just drive past. And I think they probably are quite happy with this weather. Often on extremely hot days, you'll find that the, the hippos will spend all their time during the daytime in the water. But often on a day like today, it's quite a good day to see hippos out of the water. So these hippos, I mean, there might still be some hippos that are out the water grazing just because it is nice and overcast. The sun isn't shining today. So they're not gonna need to go back to the water to protect their skin. It's also often on days like today that hippos can be a little bit more active in the water, which is always nice to see. Sometimes they displaying for us, opening their mouths very wide. But these hippos do seem like they are just relaxing. Uh, Darren, lions will hunt hippos. Um, lions are very, very opportunistic animals. So if there's an opportunity to hunt a hippo, they definitely will take that opportunity. I mean, especially if there's a, a calf or there's a, a hippo by itself, that's often a, a good time for lions to hunt hippos. But often you'll find if lions are trying to hunt hippos, those hippos will start running and in the direction of the closest water source. And being cats, they don't enjoy water. So as soon as that hippo goes into the water, those lions then give up. But I have seen a few times lions feeding on hippos and I've seen a lot of stories and videos and documentaries of lions taking down hippos. Especially like in the Okavango Delta up in Botswana or around Mana Pools area in the lower Zambezi where the hippo population is huge as well as the lion population. So they will definitely take on a hippo. Okay, so we're gonna probably continue from this waterhole, drive around and see if we are able to find any tracks of the Nkuhuma Pride. But for now, I'm gonna send you over to Eric, who does have some lions. Right, so we've got a, so, well, there was two of them sitting there. Oh, 
have a look at this. Look at that gorgeous boy. Huh? Hello, big boy. Where have you been? You are looking in great shape. Look at that lovely dark mane. His mane really is starting to get darker. And you can see he's doing a little bit of scent marking. He'll kick up a little bit of dirt, a little bit of dirt and some plants, a little bit of scraping with his back paws, and then he will uh, sort of scent mark on top of that. There's a vehicle that is with us next to <laughs> They're going to go and have a look at him. Sorry, I'm just looking around. So we're watching him, but then there's also those two that were in the pan, and one of them was running around like a headless chicken. What are you contemplating, big boy? Oh, he looks like he's really thinking long and hard about what his next movement is. Oh, so 50, stunning indeed. He gorgeous. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> There's his son. No, he says his son is lying down. Oh, come okay, on. Running into the bush, there's a tree that they just ran down, well, not run, run up into. Um, these young cubs, just like our three amigos, they love trees. They love trees. You'll find that uh, it's basically trees and bushes that they, they climb into all the time. Oh my goodness, what are these guys about to do? Look at you doing stalking. He's watching something. Oh, there's the little youngster's got a, a trophy. It looked like a warthog skull. And we'll give it this closure. There is maybe a little bit of blood or a bit of flesh on it. So for those who may not enjoy this, I will warn you that you might be seeing a little bit, but this is awesome. Look at her, her sister sneaking up on her like that. Now, this is good skills. This is skills that they need, you know? <laughs> Yo, you see how she just disappeared? She's lying behind that piece of grass, but you can't see her. Yes, Kimberly, indeed they do. They were, <laughs> they were definitely. Now she's been tag teamed. We've got two. Of, this is oh, so. These are all three of the sub adults. The smallest one is the one walking at the back. She's about to leave the screen. The two biggest ones are the ones the one facing us, and the one now sitting down. How can you do that right next to your sister's face? Almost. The, leave a little piddle right there, and she's eating. They really are in a playful mood this morning. It's lovely. They'll play a bit of uh, tag with that uh, warthog head. You know, run around chasing after each other, taking turns to nibble little bits off off of it. males coming into the scene here. <laughs> smack each other, smack. Now you see that young male has distracted his sister while the other one has swooped in and stolen the kill. Very clever. I will apologize once again for the noise of other vehicles. This uh, is a very 
busy, busy sighting this morning as I don't think they were seen yesterday afternoon. Uh, and in the morning there were also some, they were seen, but not by all. I think everybody's trying to get into this area to have a view at our beautiful, beautiful lions. And she's there looking at that skull. You can just see the ears. I don't know how much meat there would be left on that kill, on that skull. There probably be a few cheekbones, maybe a tongue, something like that. Cooksters, this is amazing. It really is. We're very lucky this morning, I think. We are very, very lucky. Bit of noises coming from them there, kind of kind of noises, and that's how they will kind of, you know, chatter to each other. They'll make like a type of noise. You normally hear the contact calling also starts like that. I don't know what's going on behind these bushes here, but it's definitely some rough play. I just sounded like I just heard a paw or something hit the abdomen or sounded like somebody was falling. Puma, indeed, it really is. Oh, we love seeing the lions chasing each other like this. You know, Even when they're playing with the look, like a skull, with a skull like this, I mean, look at her. She's having the time. <laughs> Look, now you're gonna carry it all over the place. You gonna drag it. Okay, that's just a little bit of a repositioning and going back to the chewing. Oh, she is. I think it's her that's making the small noises. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari.
still following the, this hyena. The hyena is uh, uh, one of the immigrant males known, known as, as surprise. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to. Where's my binox here? Because there's buffalo tracks and everything coming and running into this direction. So I'm, I'm just want to double check on. There's something maybe happening in this area. And uh, it's always a good thing just to quickly get your binoculars out and uh, scan this area because uh, that hyena went into the block and now exactly those buffalo tracks came out and I just want to make sure that we're not going to miss something here and, uh, you know what um, Paul let's go to that other open clearing that side I think we're going to go quickly I thought I smelled like a kill or no, I thought I smelled something dead. Oh, there he comes out then now. Sorry, uh, uh, Paul, I'm just gonna quickly do this. <coughs> okay, there he comes. There comes the hyena now. See, we're pretty much walking across the open clearing. So we're trying to try and follow him because he's picked up on a scent of something. Look at his nose. See, you can look how he lifts his head. See how that? So he's he's sniffing out something in this area. And uh, exactly what I picked up. I also picked up on something. When I lifted my nose now, I also smelled something here. Yeah. So oh, maybe there's something dead here. Yeah. Oh, well, Priscilla, it depends on how long the kill's been lying in the sun and all that, you know, there's a certain, for certain things. But uh, if it was from this morning, it won't smell like rotten meat at all. It'll be pretty much, you get that metallic smell. Metallic smell and as well as, you know, you've got the um, stomach contents of the animal. Sometimes you can pick up on that very, very quickly. So I'm just going to see where he's going to go from where, from this open clearing. Looks like he might be heading a little bit. Is he still... Looking in this direction, so I think the best thing is to follow him and to see where he's going to lead us to. It might be a slow process, but let's see. All right, let's go this way, um, Paul. I'm just going to quickly get to this road here. Oh. <coughs> Always a nice way to sometimes find a kill. Not always, but it's always you know you can pick up on the on the hyena's uh, uh, body or their, their behaviour and their body gestures and all that. If they are if they are close to something, then they can start picking up their noses. They start listening out. They start becoming a little bit more kind of tentative on getting into that area. Then you know that you might be close to a potential uh, kill. Not always, but I just yeah, you gotta just first work work it out and look at the behavior. I think behavior is very important. Uh, Alright, so he's coming through this little section here. Yeah, there he's going okay, he's in front of us, so uh, let's carry on with that. I'm gonna just carry on, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know, I don't see those buffalo tracks last week okay, going into this side, yeah. So, um, you know, very much, uh, or very possible that uh, it could be something lying out. But he's not on a big mission, you know. It's very much, how can I say, he's uh, not moving quickly, you know. He's just taking, he's ambling, uh, ambling along and, uh, you know, heading into this direction where we think maybe something is uh, dead maybe but uh, we'll see now we'll see maybe it'll surprise us surprise will surprise us yes that's oh, starting to move a bit more now I don't want to miss any tracks around here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. 
Uh, Brian, I've seen leopards uh, track down buffaloes and follow buffaloes, but uh, uh, it's uh, buffaloes too big for a leopard. Oh, don't go in there! Don't go in there! Uh, he's going into a bad spot now. And yeah, there's cases of the leopard bringing down a calf. If a calf is pretty much abandoned by, oh, it's very. Oh, now he's excited. Oh, now he's excited. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Now I'm excited. <laughs> All right, let's quickly see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Why did he all of a sudden change direction there? And uh, he's going straight. That side. Mm. All right, well, this hyena's gone cut straight across. He's gonna head towards I think Impala Road, Vuyatilla Access. Remember, Tortoise Pan was coming down there last night. When we left Tortoise Pan, he was actually busy hunting some Impalas there. Oh. Let's see where he's going there. Yeah, he's running directly towards. Oh, he stopped there, yeah. Sorry, you're right there. Sorry, you're right. Impalas are alarm calling on the other side, hear them? Uh -huh. Alright, let's go around uh, Mpo. Sorry, you're good there. Yeah. So the hyena has gone further. Alright, let's go. Mm. So we can't follow hyenas through the bush. Let's remember that we only really follow like the big five or uh, as well as wild dogs and a cheetah they'll go off-roading because we start going through for uh, going through the bush for everything and then uh, you're going to cause too many two tracks into the bush and do too much damage so we are very much restricted to that which is perfect so you can see the buffaloes come off from here let's just quickly go around there Got some impalas just chilling out here quite quite hard here. Yeah? Yes, don't worry. Hi, morning. Alright, let's quickly jump on here. Oh, you can see all these buffaloes came running this side as well. One or two buffaloes here. Just check. Okay, now we're. Lindy, yes, <laughs> I can't wait. I'm trying my utmost to see if we can just pick up on something. I don't want to see if we can find exactly why. Then I ended started running into this direction and while the impalas were long for them. Impalas are running, or oh, not running, they're actually <laughs> walking that way. And there's some impalas walking that direction. So I'm going to put off, uh, turn the vehicle off here quickly and listen out. It's always a good thing to use your sense of hearing as well. And that's exactly what happened yesterday afternoon here at the Kudu alarm calling. Listen out for something like birds or squirrel, or hyena whooping, anything. Not coming up behind us, same Paul.
Go down a little bit. Let's go down a little bit. When we're just going to try and see, I might jump off here quickly and just going to go and take a bit of a walk here. I just want to see if I can maybe come right on foot to this. What's that? A parlor coming out there. Are you a wildlife fanatic glued to YouTube for your daily dose of animal antics? Then welcome to Africam's wildlife community. By joining our YouTube memberships, you get no ads, just wild live streams, chat with other bush fans, get early access to exciting camera spots, and flex your wildlife knowledge with fun quizzes. Visit Africam's YouTube channel and click the join button now. Panda, my man, what do you want to see today? Elephants. elephants. Now, Panda says he'll be happy if he sees elephants. He didn't see them yesterday. We do also have another special guest on board, William. William, what would you like to see today? We're already seeing hippos. Happy, happy enough now, but I'll leave it up to the wild. <laughs> William says that he'll leave it up to the wild. He was very happy that he got to see some hippos and he's going to leave it up to nature to see what it provides us. It is about time that uh, Tlalamba makes another appearance on Juma. So maybe we will bump into her. We are going to head more back in towards the central parts of Juma. Where we've been on the outskirts and maybe drive in the Mulwati drainage line uh, because it is quite windy there might be a chance of some animals maybe lying in the sand trying to get away from this little breeze that there is it does also look like there's some more rain coming from our west so they also might be hunkering down We follow them down this very long, straight, sandy road. We've now got uh, the young male. Yo, they're very camouflaged. Wow. We've got the young male and one of his siblings. It 
the rest of the pride has sort of taken a turn into the bushes. They've headed uh, more east. Um, not to show. Okay, well, there goes one of the females. She's going to follow. Not to show where they're heading. It seems like they may be looking for some water. I mean, they were heading in the right direction, but when they started turning east, now they're going in the wrong direction. Oh, everybody is all over the place. Is someone about to cross the road and take the young male with them? Hmm. I wonder. I mean, it, it's been an amazing sighting so far, but I wonder where they're heading. I wonder what they're doing. I think we may follow up, uh, depending on how easy it's going to be. But uh, it all depends on where they go. Uh, we should probably tell the other guys that are coming into this sighting. But uh, <laughs> they are no longer on the road here. They've gone off to the right. But they seem like they're on a mission, so I don't think they're going to stop in amongst the thicket here. I think they're going to continue. they pop out on the rest of the the track here and uh, provide us with some form of a sighting all right we are going to try and see if we can't find these lines again but in the meantime we'll send you over to Cedric and his beautiful animal Good luck there, Eric. Uh, I'm still trying to follow up on uh, whatever that hyena was listening out for and, um, and sniffing the air for something in the area, but uh, I haven't I haven't really seen much more. We just stopped again for a few minutes and just to double check if there was uh, uh, maybe some alarm calls coming through from the thickets there, but uh, clearly not. Uh, nothing, nothing. So I'm just going back. Uh, just doing a little bit of the loop, so, ooh, hello! <laughs> Alright, um, wait, wait, no, I'm going to go in, for, sorry, sorry, for, <laughs> sorry for my apologies. I'm going to try and do it this way. It's going to be better, eh? Yeah. There we go. We've got elephants. Hello, hello, madame. Hello, madame. A nice little female elephant the youngster behind her uh, just enjoying a good old early morning feed and I think the elephants are very very stoked with life at the moment that the it's nice and cool we had a bit of a drizzle nice uh, vegetation here to pretty much feed on and I don't have to really have to go to or, you know to the dams for now Candles, candles. Yes, nice uh, first animal, uh, first elephant for the morning. First elephant for the morning. Ah, oh, sorry, not candle, Randall. All right, Randall. There we go. <laughs> Close. Uh, yes, Randall. First elephants for the morning. Nice, nice and relaxed. And those are nice for us just to kind of settle down a little bit yeah, and listen out and enjoy magnificent animals. Oh, it can just sit with elephants for hours and just uh, and just enjoy their, their behavior. Okay, well, he's coming this way. Mm, he's sniffing out. Here he is. 
morning. <laughs> Enjoying that. Yes, where's your little baby? Where's the little one? We've gone a little bit further into the bush. I might have to reposition just so shortly. What do you think, Paul? Try and get there, see if we can shoot around that yeah. side, yeah. Alright, we're just going to try and reposition here quickly. We do have our rain roofs on, so it makes it a bit tricky with uh, the rain roof, the pole itself. So, I have to just try... Ooh. <laughs> yeah, we might get it this way. Let's well, see if we can pull. Yeah, it should be alright like that. Oh, she is listening out for something. You can see her uh, uh, picking up her head like that. I think she's just trying to figure out where's her youngster because the little one went further into the bush. Alright. <laughs> No, so this, I don't think they'll hide away when there's lightning. They just continue with their daily feeds. They, there's no, there's no change in the behaviour with the lightning. Oh, there they go. Bye bye. All right. Well, that's the elephants for now. For now, we'll see if we can uh, maybe try and get other elephants during the morning. But those ones are going into the thick, thick stuff. There's no way I'm going to try and follow and crash down bushes just to try and. That's nice, a little bit of an elephant sighting there, nothing too crazy. It was uh, nice and relaxing. Alright, as I said, I'm going to go a little bit further down this side. I just want to see, let me see, he came down here. Well, uh, leopard came down here. I just want to double check because nothing is coming out on Zoe's. I just, it just. I've got a feeling that he, and this looks very fresh, <coughs> leopard tracks. So I just want to try and see if he did turn into, there's a little pathway that uh, tortoise pad turns into every single time. And we always get his tracks going this side, so. I'm just want to double check here. Alright, I'm sure Paul can around there so I want to double check here all right so sometimes see so you'll use exactly this pathway going in here uh, you can see uh, just touch here sometimes I was gonna touch the soil sometimes just to see if it breaks off easy if it's not hard then it's very very soft so it's not long ago that he has actually moved into that side. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing something else around here. Um, no, it doesn't look like a... There. 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 Yeah, straight that way. Alright, let's go. So 50, yeah, nothing better than a cat mystery and uh, and he's ending up as a little bit of a mystery this morning <clears throat> and there is also beautiful male leopard tracks coming from the south coming north so I am gonna still work this western side yeah you know when we when I feel that there is something yeah it's pointless leaving the area <clears throat> we will find we will find these cats very shortly very shortly it's all about Patience and persistence. Alright, let's go around. One of the things that came running out here. Let's just go take a look around that side and pull. George, I think <coughs> they'll follow, the hyenas will follow the scent mark of a leopard and of a kill. So if they pick up on a kill, if they pick up on a scent of a kill somewhere, yes, they're going to try and follow.
follow that. But if it, uh, you saw how many times that we find a leopard without a kill, and uh, and the hyena and the hyenas will quickly pick up on where that leopard is moving without a kill, or where the leopard is situated. So it, both ways, a leopard scent and uh, the scent of a of a kill. Oh, sorry, I thought I saw something on the road. It was just a dove. <laughs> it was a dove that was just busy stretching. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I've got my coffee here. Yeah. I, 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 I think I need more coffee. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder if all Eric has uh, come right with these lions again. And then I'm a Kyla. Uh, Calvin tracking in this kind of weather is, you know, it's it's got its it's got its got its got its pros and cons. Uh, it's got its pros and cons, and I think at the end of the day, uh, the pros to tracking in weather like this is if something has just recently walked past there, you can actually see clearly the wetness of the of the track of the ground itself, and it has a nice scuffle mark. So that's a pro to it. Uh, the con to it is that. If something has moved through here, uh, um, say four hours, five, five hours ago, say five hours ago, and we've had all the drizzle this morning, you know, those tracks tend to almost disappear or look old and all that. So that's uh, the pros and cons to it. So um, um, it has that, yeah. You know. And so I always get excited, even with weather like this, I get excited when I see tracks and I see it's fresh and it's in like the scuffle marks on the ground and it was after the rain, and then I'm like, hmm, it's worthwhile looking at. All right, uh, so Tortoise Pan Uzi, when it comes from Vuertilla Access, you'll come along this little, this little pathway. Yeah, I'm just gonna quickly, sorry, Paul, I'm just gonna jump off here. I wanna double check on these things. Oh, Impala's alarm calling on, on the clearing. Okay, Impala's alarm calling on the Impala planes. Let's go. Just hold on. Hold on, Paul. They're calling on the, exactly where that hyena went in. I think they're going, they're going, they're going crazy there. We'll get there. <laughs> but they're calling on this clearing. Uh... I think Paul is outside. Somewhere, yeah. Uh, so we're just gonna just stop here and listen out again. Yeah, it's somewhere, yeah. Uh, something is, yeah. All right, I'm gonna just uh, turn the vehicle off. 
right now. I have a nice little view of this area. Just gonna quickly turn off here. There's a big bird up there as well. Wait. Oh, there, in front. In front. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Paul. I know. I do apologize. They're calling. Uh... All right. We'll get something in, um, Paul. We'll get something. Yeah, they're all looking this way. They're all looking this way. They're looking that way now. They're looking straight down the road. Oh. They're looking this way, yeah. Sure, sure, it's a leopard here. Some. Oh, yeah, the squirrel's going crazy here as well. The squirrel's going crazy. Come on, you pardo. Where are you? Squirrels are going crazy in here. Let's just go inside here. Squirrels are going crazy in here, so I'm sure. Do you want to do a little loop in here? Mm. Mm. Right, so I'm just going to quickly do a little loop inside here. It's here somewhere, it's here somewhere. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, and the grass is so high. You know, the leopard just walks in this grass and it is it's gone. It just disappears so quick. Got this, got this rain roof on here. It's a bit of a, a tricky situation with the rain roof. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, where are you? Just watch your head there. I'm getting so excited yeah, I'm hoping that this uh... Gwen, can we just try and do a little bit of tracking here quickly if it's possible?
you've got tortoise pen. Tortoise pen. Hi, mister. Hey, mister. All right, let's go up that side. We're going to get a nice walk by. Oh. <laughs> yeah, near cake. All right. So he did not move too quick. So All right, I'm going to just do it like the way. Well, let's go right up there. Okay. Yeah, we're going to nice walk by. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just don't want him to cut across here. Just check behind you, Kumpo. He's coming straight up. All right. Now. Weep. Yes. Linda Poli, boom. Shakalaka. Yeah, that's it. Thanks to the impalas and everything. Patience and perseverance. Yes. And my boy, beautiful male leopard. You can see still the left ear is still dropped and still got a bit of a limp on his left hand side, but nothing too serious. When we saw him yesterday afternoon, you can see that he was in a bit of a fight with another male. Hey, tortoise pan. All right, he's going to come right past me now. So I'm going to keep my eyes on him. Uh, he still walks. Oh, he's coming straight towards me. I hope he doesn't smell my coat, <laughs> my oiled coat, and he thinks he's going to chow it. <laughs> Yo. <clears throat> All right, let me just quickly get on the radio with these guys. Sorry, I have to just call this in. Yeah, stations I've just located on uh, Tortoise Pan here at uh, Impala Plains heading towards Palanitis. Yeah, with Tortoise Pan, I can see it. Apparently, when I spoke to the guide yesterday, and uh, the guy that he knows the guys from Londolosi as well, and he said that. Tortoise pan, uh, tortoise pan was pretty much um, in a little bit of a, they said a scuffle with the flat rock and mail in that area like two days ago. So I think, uh, and then they got his tracks coming yesterday morning straight up out of Londolosi, straight up the uh, Robson's boundary into towards a fire fence line and then into Juma. And remember I said last night, he might stay here on Juma for maybe a, a day or two, like the Black Dam males, when they had a little bit of a confrontation with the Nzenga male lions. So maybe just kind of, just, you know, recovering a little bit in this area. And that could be a big thing. All right, ready? Let's, uh... But now he's on patrol. Now you can see he's moving. And he's going further into, Ju uh, into Juma again. So I was just worried he was going to cross into Safari Arethusa, but uh, yeah, no, he's straight back to Juma. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so clear. <clears throat> yeah, Safari Bagul he is. He's a, he's a beast. He's really a brute of a male. Very short, but as I always say, very stocky. Now you can see clearly that left ear is kind of a little bit lower than the right ear and but that limp on his left front leg is not serious at all it's very very subtle so it's something that he's gonna overcome very quickly um i think somebody said that he might have might have been bitten by a snake. No, that's not a snake. That snake won't do that. A snake, yes, will pretty much, uh, make, it'll swell up the, the dewlap. I know I've seen it before with uh, my Fufinian and the dewlap will swell up. But uh, not that he got the, you can see he's got a bite mark here, something with the blood on his neck here, and as well as he's a little bit swollen and a limp. A snake won't, won't give a, a leopard a, a limp there. So, yeah. Uh, If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, 
then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcast. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. All right, so we're still here. Oh, of course, I'm still here with the tortoise pan, this male leopard, and I am not going to move anywhere else. I'm just going to stop here so we can watch him move and walk down the road. Yeah. And he's slowly just moving. He's sniffing. He's not on a huge mission at all. I mean, from where he was last night to where we got him this morning. Uh, it's not far. I think he might have, uh, I've got a feeling during the night time he might have actually rested somewhere for the entire night just to recover a bit. And now uh, he's decided, okay, let me start moving, let me start patrolling my my territory. So he's going onto pretty much his eastern border of his, uh, his territory now. And he'll go down Balanites, he'll go down Zoe's, and then he'll cut south east towards Philemon's cut line. And remember, we've got another male leopard tracks coming north as well. Alrighty then, let's uh, continue moving, following him. So yeah, so got other male leopards coming, no uh, other male leopard tracks coming north this morning. Very fresh as well from Shabamu Road, Gary Main. So that's pretty much on the south, uh, southeast from where we are now. And uh, he's coming now back. He's coming from the north, um, from where we where we pretty much not very, where we had him exactly last night, but a little bit further south from there. Now if he's going to do his patrols, and if he's going to go onto typical yeah Balanites, you're going to see he's going to turn right. He's going to go down Zoe's and he's going to go quite far down and he's going to turn southeast and that's this is that's uh, this male's uh, boundary um, uh, eastern boundary of his territory and it's the western boundary for another male leopard called Mawati 
And I think that was more whitey coming up and now TP's going down. So I'm just, I really hope that they don't bump into each other because I think TP is really looking uh, a little bit sore and all that. So, um, uh, and you see, if male leopards bump into each other, they are territorial and they are going to defend their territory no matter what. It's just the way they, they are. And you can see Sissa just scent marking a little bit there. And there he goes again. So we can't get in front of him. I don't want to get in front of him. So we're just going to remain behind him for the time being, let him do his thing. You see the birds are busy alarm calling, typical, and now he got his tail that's right up like a scorpion. Always saying, yes, I know birds, you see me, and uh, I'll, anyway, I'm not yet to hunt. I'm busy doing a bit of a patrol instead of a hunt for now. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. Lovely. Uh, standing by. Um, do you have to be? Uh, it's affirmative. Um, how many more was driving in Yuma uh, from east and west? No, oh, sorry, I don't know. I don't follow up on that. So, sorry, no idea. Yeah, um, I might come and. Uh, I tried to get a observed in Bevesoka, I was trying to follow up on the other ones, I was trying to check out that stuff. Alright, Kabi, I'm just live, I'll chat to you later. I'm just Balanati's Ace Junction if you want to know where I am. Alright, so Brenda, a male leopard, when a male leopard soars, it's much longer and deeper. When it's a female, it's much. So it's much shorter uh, bursts compared to a male. A male's long and much deeper. So that's how you'll tell between a male and female when they are doing their territorial calls or if they're calling for a mate somewhere. Mm, there's a big blanket of rain that's coming ahead of us there. Lovely. Maybe you guys and rest up in one of these marula trees for the morning. I would be very happy. Maybe we can come and follow up on him again this afternoon. Okay, I'm just going to stop. Uh, I just want to get a nice angle here where we can still watch him move off instead of driving. All right there. All right, let's head over to Chad as he is chilling at Treehouse Dam. Well then, setters, two days in a row found in tortoise pan. Fantastic stuff. And we've just come to Treehouse Dam now where we've just parked the vehicle on the dam wall and we're just taking in the beautiful scenery. It has been a little bit quiet on my side but we don't give up, we keep going. It is a beautiful morning though to be out and about on safari. I mean it's not too hot, a slight breeze now, I think if we don't have any luck with uh, too many animals, we might start just uh, trying to see if we can maybe find some interesting tracks to talk about. And there is a kudu that's off in the distance there that you can see. And we were hoping that this kudu came down to the water to have a drink. But it does seem like they are slowly moving away, but maybe we'll get lucky and they'll come down to the water. Also I wanted to see if Dewey was around here at Treehouse Dam but it doesn't seem like it. I think he might be in Gari Dam. It's the hippo that we ended with last night. 
Amazing how camouflage these kudus are. I mean, if you just scan with your eyes now, it's very tough to pick up where this kudu is. And those white markings down the side of a, a kudu, they're called disruptive markings. And I mean, it often, if you just look uh, quickly, you'll often see the white stripes. And it's said to, when the predators look at the kudu and they run away, it's they can't actually see exactly where that kudu's gone because a lot of the branches and things like that are this whitish brown color very similar to those markings and it's a, a way of trying to get away from any predator that might be hunting it I mean kudus they are browsers so they do spend time in much thicker areas like we can see around there so I'm sure that uh, does work in their favor when being hunted by lions. And I did also get an update from the guys in Biffles Hook, um, just north of our property. They have found tracks of the Nkuhuma Pride in their property. So they did cross out, just like I, I said a little bit earlier. But it's nice to, to know their whereabouts because, I mean, that pride of lions, they move ridiculous amounts. Being such a big pride, they need to on the move looking for some, their next meal. And something like a kudu would definitely be a good meal for that pride of lions. I mean, it's not as big as a buffalo, but it definitely will feed all of those lions. Pandas uh, working some magic here on the camera. So, Oscar, uh, the, the kudus, they won't have a similar time to the rat. So the reason impalas have that rutting season and other animals have that rutting season now in April is because they all breed at the same time. So impalas and wildebeest, things like that, they all breed now or they'll start mating now in April and then they give birth around November, December where kudus, they don't have a breeding season. So they're very similar to nyalas where they can give birth all year round. So you can see baby kudus January through to December. And so they then won't have a specific season where the females will go into estrus and be ready to mate. I have once before found uh, two kudu bulls that were obviously having a territorial fight between one another. And unfortunately, they locked horns and they were unable to take their horns off of one another. They got trapped. Unfortunately, both of them did die. And we, we found the, the two carcasses still intertwined, the horns. And a day later, there was a clan of, I think it was eight or nine hyenas that were devouring those kudus. But I think as those kudus do start to move off into the distance, we're going to send you back over to Cedric, who's following Tortoise Pan. All right, we're just waiting patiently here down the road because I know that he usually takes this little pathway, like there's an animal pathway to my right now, and uh, he usually takes us into the bush. So I'm just going to wait to see if we can get a, a last nice, uh, nice, how can I say, a walk by. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> he should be coming around that corner very shortly. I'm just keeping a very close eye. But he's, here he comes, here he comes. Yes, the catwalk. The majestical tortoise pan, the male leopard of the western side of Ajuma dominant male. Busy scent marking, making sure that any other male leopards coming past him knows that he is the 
quite dominant for you. But as I said, hmm, Mawati's, I'm sure Mawati was also making his way north, so we can see he's listening out as well now a little bit. Trying to figure out what is he, what is he hearing? So he's going to come a little bit on the uh, two tracker, then you'll see just before my Rusty, before the vehicle, and he's going to turn into the bush. Or if he doesn't, then he might just continue a little bit further down. Scent marking, there we go, scraping his hind legs, just urinating a bit there. There we go, straight onto that pathway. There he goes. And straight into the bush. That is tortoise pan. All right. So what we are, we're going to be doing now? We are going to be pretty much uh, following him through this uh, thick stuff. So Gwen, we are going to get into the hairy stuff now, and hopefully no hairy caterpillars, but just the hairy stuff. All right. You ready, Paul? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Got the rain roof on. Even more of an obstacle, but that's fine. Engage in low range, always do when you go off-road, always do in case you fall into an artfark hole or a, a burrow of maybe a warthog burrow or something and at least you are in low range, already in low range. Life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage, to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. Uh, tortoise pan is picking up on. Uh, he keeps on looking straight to the. He said, "Go lie down, please lie down." Oh, no, he's not going to lie down. All right. Yeah, we. Okay. Mm, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's kick it. Let's try and get around here. This is a very, a very hairy area. This, um, this area. Whoa. 
you know, to find a gap to get through here, uh, it's not uh, it's not easy driving at all, not at all. That's why I have to try and work this out quickly. All right, just hold on and pull, just in case. I don't know where this is going to take us. How's your side? They're looking all right. Let's see if I can let's see if I can get through yeah. Hopefully the tip is not too bad. Uh, no. Alright, I'm gonna put the uh, trees in the center. So they do pop up behind us. Um, I'm gonna just try and see. Sorry, just watch this side here. Hannah, yes, sorry, we just have to try and this is just gonna going to get a little bit tough here just to see if we can stay up with them. I'm uh, gonna see how now I'm trying to figure out I'm, I'm poor and myself are actually we actually came through this little uh, section the other day. And uh I'm just gonna try and work out where did we cross? Because there's a couple of uh, drainage lines here. A couple of drainage lines here, and there's only certain crossing uh, areas that you can cross these drainage lines. Luckily, I've been in this block quite a few times already, so I don't know exactly which ones, to, which areas to utilize. Yeah. Yeah. There you guys. Okay. All right, I think while well, we're going to try and get through this drainage line that's ahead of us, let's head over to Chad. Yeah, that's the one. Hopefully, Cedric is able to get through that drainage line and follow Tortoise Pan. But we've left Treehouse Dam and we are now on our way up to the northwestern part of Juma. It uh, is a little bit more open up in that area. We're hoping to find some more life up there. We have been spending quite some time in the, the central parts of the reserve and haven't been able to find any fresh tracks that are worth following. We did see tracks of a male leopard, but I'm pretty sure that it was tortoise pan's tracks that was heading in the exact direction of where Cedric is. So I wasn't going to try and track down that male leopard that has already been found. Sorry, Gwyn, uh, lost the comms there. Try the question again. I got Ralph. Ah, oh. um, Ralph, I have indeed had, sorry about that. Uh, Panda's just keeping the, the lens clean. There is quite a lot of drizzle coming into the vehicle, but Rolf, I have indeed had uh, cats before turn to me and give me a growl or uh, a charge. Um, a lot of the times when I've been growled at is not in the vehicle. In the vehicle, the cats are very, very used to you. They, they're fine with your presence, but a lot of the time when you're walking, that is when animals do tend to be a little bit more nervous around you and they're not as used to us on foot as they are in the vehicle so I mean when I'm, you're driving guests and there's tracks of lines they go off the road when you're working with the tracker you'll often then get off and walk and try and find the lines come back to the car and then drive in because it's pointless just driving in and doing loops in the in the, the block to try and find them and one particular story, I was tracking the, the North Pride up in uh, Pinda Private Game Reserve in the northern, northern KwaZulu-Natal and 
I tracked them and it was two male lions, three lionesses, and I think there were five cubs. And we walked in, we bumped into this pride of lions and we didn't see, but there was a male lion lying off to the left-hand side and this male lion did not enjoy us. And he started growling, so we didn't know he was there. He growled, so we turned and looked and we're like, okay, he's there probably 10 or 12 meters from us. And so the tracker and I, we slowly backed off away from where the lions were. But that male lion, that particular day, decided that it was fantastic to follow us out to the vehicle. And so we, I slowly walked backwards. The tracker was holding my belt and we, I was backing away, backing away slowly. And, but every step I took backwards, the male lion stepped forward. And this, I mean, we were probably two, 300 meters from the vehicle. So it took us about five or 10 minutes to get back. And when I jumped back on the vehicle, the male lion was back lying in the road in front of us, not 20 or 30 meters away. And the look on the guests' faces, they were shocked. I was also a little bit shocked that this male lion had, I basically had walked the cat from inside a thick area onto the road for the guests to see. And as soon as we jumped in the vehicle, that male lion then was completely relaxed with us being around. It's just very different when we are on foot. So that's just one of the many stories that I do have about lions charging me or growling at me. There has been also sometimes I've, I've been charged by a leopard before in the vehicle. Chewy, so when I say that I got off the vehicle at the tracker, there weren't any guests with us. There were. Uh, I'm going to send you over to Cedric quickly. We've got two leopards, we've got two leopards. View discretion, view discretion. They just got a leopard, I mean, uh, two male leopards. We've got two male leopards here. We've got two male leopards here. We got tortoise pan that caught the, the warthog and another male leopard came running in. Oh my goodness, two male leopards. It looks like we got more. Uh, You're right there. Yeah, shop, shop, shop. Oh my word, you want a sighting. View discretion, please, view discretion. This leopard has just taken down this warthog that came running out of the termite mound. I don't know where we've got here now. It looks like we might have more whitey. So we've got two. So what happened is tortoise pan caught the warthog and then this other male leopard came in and took over from tortoise pan. I am shaking. I am, I am, I am shaking. All right, let me just see if we can get both leopards or we right like uh, that. We're sharp. We're sharp, eh? For now, yeah. Okay. I don't know which other leopard. It looks like more whitey. I, I couldn't see exactly which leopard is on the, on the, on the warthog at the moment. So it's more whitey. So yeah, and remember what I told you, everybody? So thanks, Raz. I couldn't see. It was happened so quickly. So more whitey and tortoise pan together, yeah? And... Uh, Clearly, Tor Mawati has decided to take over. Oh, look at this, look at there. There's, there's Tortoise Pan walking at the background now. There's Tortoise Pan. Oh, now, now it's a problem. Look at these two male leopards. They might even fight you. Uh, the war dog is still. Oh, oh. <coughs> this is the most amazing sighting I've seen. Here comes Tortoise Band in now.
This is crazy. What about go, Warthog? Don't come to me. Show him this Warthog. Is. The leopards are going after the, the Warthog again. All right, let's go. This is, oh my goodness. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Of course, they're also worried about each other. They forgot about the Warthog. Oh, they, oh, yeah. Watch, just hold on. Yeah. Oh, they've got the Warthog again. Shame, that Warthog is, yeah. That poor Warthog, yeah. I think the Warthog is just, it felt like it's too badly injured to get away. But it clearly looks like Mawati is more of the, the, the dominant one and uh, Tortoise Pan is, here he comes, he's still hanging at the back there. But it looks like Mawati is more the, the dominant one here and Tortoise Pan didn't know what to do. But he's not giving up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm all, actually, I'm in tears um, because this has just been one of the most craziest sightings I've had. Craziest, actually, if not the craziest, with two male leopards at once grabbing a warthog. Okay. Yeah, sorry, um, um, uh, Doc. Uh, sorry, I just uh, the tortoise pan just bumped a hornchi with uh, more whitey coming in here as well. I'm in the block. Sorry, I'm just live. So it's pretty much tickets for now. The problem here is, what what is tortoise what is what is tortoise pan going to do? Yeah. BK, yes, no, it is crazy. BK, this has been just. Uh, whoa, I'm shaking. I'm shaking at the moment. And exactly what I said this morning. Tortoise pants, tra I mean, Mawati's tracks coming up. Watch, maybe they're going to bump into each other. And true as Bob, on a kill, a water kill. It was just, yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's I'm, I'm right in the middle of the block here, at, uh, Gwen. It's very difficult at the moment. I'm in the middle of the block between Zoe's and and Philemon's cut line. It's a big block. This. Sorry, I'm just trying to let. And. Uh, You hear them growling. You can see these two males are sussing each other out. Mm -hmm. He's going to come from. Oh, oh what dog is dead now? Now it's time to move on to the next thing that is to deal with the male leopard. So you can see this this is normal behavior, Gwen. This is normal behavior. It's two male leopards. Just remember this is more whitey's furthest western boundary and this is tortoise pan's furthest eastern boundary. Alright, they are moving that way now. I'm just gonna have to. Let's, let's, just gotta try and keep them. Oh, they're running. They're running. They left the water gear. Yeah, let's run. They're running. Just to try and keep an eye open here. If, uh, yeah. Just run. Where are they? Both of them just ran after each other now. 
Now which way, I don't know. Uh, I just left that warthog right there, but they'll go back for that warthog unless Iena steals it. We've got to turn off here quickly. Alright, uh, Gwen, let's just give us a little bit of a chance to try and follow, uh, fo uh, follow these, find these two leopards. Watch, oh, shucks, oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> uh, I protected you, I protected you, sorry, I got you there. Oh, they just ran. Now we have to try and find them. Let's go to Chad. Yeah, yeah, they just. Uh, how fa uh, fantastic that Cedric just saw that tortoise pan kill and. Malwati just popped up. I am also en route towards that area just to see if I can give Cedric a hand in staying with these leopards. So I'm as, as excited as uh, Cedric is because what an incredible way to see, I mean, to see the interaction between Tortoise Pan and Malwati. I've also never seen Tortoise Pan before so that would be special for me to see. Cedric is quite uh, far into the block so he said it might be quite tough for me to find but like you all know I'm always up for a challenge and we might even bump into them on the road but we're not too far from the area where the action is happening. And thanks Gwen. So apparently Cedric is now on the road, so we hopefully are able to find him. Oh, tortoise, sorry. I just did, did drive around that tortoise. Hold on there, Panda. Well, uh, Layla, so leopards, they are solitary animals, so you won't find them helping one another. Um, it might be like a mom will help a cub at a young age, but once they go independent, they're going to be completely solitary. They're, it's all competition out here, so they unfortunately aren't going to help one another hunt. I mean, like you've seen there, because the warthog probably made a loud squeal, what then happened is Mulwati might have heard that squeal and come because it's, I mean, to scavenge a carcass or take a carcass is easier than hunting. And so that's why he's then come in to go and investigate but you won't find two leopards going out together to hunt to make it easier they are solitary animals unlike lions as lions I mean being a very social cat they will all help one another Gwen, can you try to ask uh, Cedric exactly where he is for me, please? Because <coughs> I've driven down Zoe's, unable to find Cedric. I know there is lots going on in that sighting at the moment. But I'm going to turn around because we are now at Vuyatela Access, which I don't think Cedric is close by to here. We might have driven past the, the off-roading tracks where he did go into the block and all my excitement in trying to get there. 
but we will find him. He is along this road somewhere. Don't you worry. Everybody, if you give me just two seconds, I'm going to try and radio Cedric Yagwin. I think if you can, maybe try link us to Amakala just while we try and find the sighting. Cedric, chat Cedric. Standing by. Uh, Cedric, can you just go with your position? Uh, we, uh, just, uh, we're the west of Philemon's cut line, in the block, we're trying to just try to relocate, like myself, yeah. Uh, copied. Uh, they, uh, they want me to also come to that site in. Is access on off Zoe's or Philemon's cut line? Okay, everybody, we're going to send you over oh, to sorry. Amakala. Philemon's uh, cut line. Sorry, so let's just go again. We are here now overlooking the far western part of the dune thicket. We thought that we'd be able to go back to our lines, but I think it's got too hot too quickly and they have now disappeared into the bushes so but we had an amazing sighting with them this morning i don't think uh, we we managed to see all of them and we also managed to see the big boy which is something that we haven't seen in quite some time so i think we can call it a good sighting and we can leave it at that now we there's lots of uh, mouse birds in this area making a lot of noise. I think it's probably because of our presence. Now for those of you who may not know what a mouse bird looks like, um, it, it's, it's a <laughs> it looks like a, a small little brown bird, um, probably about, let's say, five to, five to seven centimeters tall. And they've got these long tail feathers. And normally there's about four, four or five of the tail feathers, sometimes three, uh, put together in these long kind of brown strips. They've also got this kind of blondish mohawk. That would be the freckled mouse bird that has the blondish mohawk. And then you get the red-faced mo red uh, mouse bird here as well that has more of a, a brownish uh, mohawk, kind of like the same color as they feathers. Mouse birds sometimes do ruin hunts for specific cats, sometimes lions, you know, because they, uh, when they see a lion or a caracal or a cheetah or an African wild cat, they sound their alarm, you know, because they don't feel safe themselves. Even though they're in the top of very, very tops of the trees, the cat would have to climb up through the tree first before it would be able to get to the bird. They still make a decent amount of noise. Therefore, scaring away the prey, leaving the predator hungry. This really is a beautiful morning. A little breeze is starting to get a little bit stronger, but uh, that's fine. It's not nothing that w nothing we're not capable of handling. And now uh, we're basically just sitting up here, having a bit of a scan for some more animals that we could possibly go and have a look at. Now up here is a very good, a very good place where we can scan quite a bit of this area. Um, obviously, a fair amount of it is covered in thicket, and there are no roads. But in the open patches, there is a fair amount of visibility there, and 
roads along the side there. Unique animals that you would find here. Um, I think the dacre, the common dacre, something that we don't actually see during the day very often, but we see them a lot during the night time. Uh, Bat-eared foxes, they will occur here. Art wolf, that's as well, kind of around this area. But mostly your your thicket antelope. So your kudus. You know what we haven't seen up here is bushbuck. I don't think bushbuck enjoy, well, you find them along the coastline, so it's not like they can't deal with the sandy, sandy area here. I think the bushbuck have just kind of moved down towards the basin. That's where we generally find them. Um, plenty of kudu. But uh, yeah, most of the unique animals in this area will be animals that we don't see very, very often. And most of those animals are nocturnal animals. Brown hyena included as well. I've seen some huge, huge brown hyena in this area, especially those tracks. I've seen more of their tracks than I've seen of them. Um, yesterday afternoon before I found the lion tracks I found some brown hyena tracks which I originally thought were lion tracks because it was so big uh, but you can instantly see that it's not a lion track but right, two things um, brown hyenas have a, um, a, a lob-sided lobe and the lobe is the back pad of the animal so if you look at your hand we also have a lob-sided lobe um, that would be the one lobe would be the cushioning where your thumb is and the other lobe would be the outside so the bottom of your hand and then also they have claws so you see the claws in the tracks so it almost looks like a giant dog track The gentlemen up in Duma are just navigating through the thicket trying to find this leopard. Uh, so in the meantime, you are stuck with us, but as soon as they find it, we will send you straight back up there to view that beautiful, beautiful creature. You can see the mist still very much present I don't think for very long though oh how time flies when you're having fun daylight saving time for the US and Europe has arrived the 10th of March will see the US shift an hour forward and the 31st of March, we'll see Europe and the UK also shift an hour forward. Stay connected to nature from wherever you are in the world. Go to our website to find out more. Don't miss a moment with Wild Earth.
looking at this mist, this mist is extending quite far, like it pretty much as far as we can see. Um, it's probably more than 10 kilometers wide, uh, long, I'd say. It's one big, thick cloud. But um, I, I would say it's probably going to get burnt off probably around half past nine, ten-ish. More or less. Sounds about right. And then there'll be no mist, but there'll be this little kind of like a, a bit of haziness in a sense. Um, a lot of the time when the mist gets burnt off, there's still like uh, uh, a little bit left around, but it's not actual mist, it's a little bit higher, and the column is sometimes looks a bit like smoke. in this area not too long ago actually all right so uh, oh, a lot of chaos happening at the moment in this area and uh, we just had more whitey moving through uh, we went back to where the water kill was and nothing there I think this I uh, got something there so we just heard a leopard calling now, uh, just up here, just heard a leopard busy rasping here. So typical with two males that uh, confronted each other like that this morning and all of a sudden you can hear that they're calling, they're like, rrr, rrr. They're like this is my territory, you're not going to take my territory and uh, typical. How uh, you got there, eh? So they come to your block where we just passed that thing here. Yeah, I've got you there, I've got you there. Alright, looks like... Alright, looks like got the leopards again, yeah? So we're just going to go quickly in. You ready for round 10? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here we go. So we're just going to check, because they've been running after, chasing it after one another. Typical with them. Um, I don't know. I went back there. The warthog is gone. So I don't know. I, I doubt that warthog is alive. After we saw that warthog was completely bamboozled after the first takedown, he didn't even know how to run away anymore. I felt so sorry for it. Really felt sorry for it. Uh, yeah. I just want to pull the noise that I'm gonna be late. Trying to get to this English. Mm, all right, copy. I'm just behind you. I'm gonna be on drones cover now. I wanna see that vehicle. Kelly, yeah, uh, it's feline Friday, this crazy stuff. Oh, trying to get through all this uh, stuff and I, said, <laughs> I feel so sorry for Tortoise Pan. It feels like he's been having a few confrontations over the last day or two. So I just want to try and get through, yeah. We're going to see, uh, there is Tortoise Pan. So Tortoise Pan is heading straight back now. Oh, sorry, um, Paul. Oh, it's, it's difficult with the vehicle in front of us now at the moment. Um, just going to follow it, uh, Gwyn. Just going to follow this vehicle just for a few minutes to get to back where that uh, keel was for the, the warthog. Um, I just want to see maybe they bump into each other again. All right, let me just try and get past this uh, gentleman here quickly. All right, so tortoise pan is still coming back here, just sniffing out a bit on this area. All right, I'm just going to switch off here now. You can see, you watch him. This is exactly where the water was, right here in front of us. So now he's going to try and sniff it out now to see where did where maybe more whitey came back, stole the kill and stashed it away somewhere. Oh, I don't think I see using the sense of smell. Alright. 
right. I've got a feeling he's, he, he took it that way. All right, we're just gonna. I've got a feeling maybe he's put it under there somewhere. In Paul, what do you think? Uh, remember where we got him because we saw more water coming here. All right, I'm just gonna hang back a bit here. <laughs> almost like playing, uh, you know, almost like uh, what you call it the Easter egg hunt. All right, let's go. We're gonna see if we can continue following everybody. I'm just gonna see if we can continue following, but. But, but that uh, haunch was there, eh? Okay. So I'm just telling the other guy where the warthog kill was. Uh, let's see if we can get around here. Oh, there's... Alright, he's coming back uh, this side again. He'll pick up on that kill very quickly. Very quickly. They've got a fantastic, fantastic sense of smell. He'll find it. He'll find it. Okay. I think let's go that side. I've got a feel. I've got a feeling. Remember where we saw more whitey come from when we got yeah. here? Yeah. When we came, when we came back in here. Yeah. Oh, you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. Look around here. Yeah. yeah. The Mawati came from that side when we came back this way. Yeah, I'm just gonna see where tortoise went. Maybe gonna lead us to that haunchy bumba. Uh TP. Yeah, we're just in the block, uh, maybe 200 meters, uh, 100 meters south of Trias Dam Junction on Philemon's Cut Line, we, uh, straight west in the block. Alright, so this leopard, uh, tortoise pan is heading back to where he killed the warthog, or where he brought the, the warthog down the first time. So maybe he's going to try round number two here. We never know. Oh. All right, we're just gonna go. Nicole, okay, now we, you see where Tortoise Pan is heading? You'll see now, see that uh, hole, that's where the water came out. So they're on the, on the termite mound there, exactly where Tortoise Pan's going in now. That's where the water came running out. And that's where he grabbed it. And he's gonna just double check if there maybe still have another warthog in there. Because there was like how many came running out? Two, three, about three three warthogs came running out there. Well, I think Mulwati has stolen the other one. Sorry my boy. Oh, I do feel bad for you, my man, but that is uh how it goes, huh? Alright. I think I need to jump out of the vehicle very soon as well to go. I need a, I need a serious uh, toilet, <laughs> toilet break here. <laughs> There's been just so much action that uh, I forgot to even go to the toilet. Is he going back there again? I'm stuck in the branch. Oh. Where's he heading back that way? Oh, yeah. Ah, crikey. Crikey. What a way to start a Friday morning. I tell you, what a way to start a Friday morning. Well, he's come back, so he's not backing down for Malwati at all. He's coming back. Like, 
Okay, I'm still looking around. I'm not leaving this area that easily. All right. Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you. was making himself at home there. He's found something else. Oh no, he's gone to go and suckle from mom. I'm not too sure if you can see it quite nicely. It's very dark in that section there. They seem to be under a tree. if we get a little bit closer. Where did Miss Pinky V go? Hello, madam. Good morning. How are you? Are you well? Your baby is well? Looking good. Looking happy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Have a look at this little guy standing off. Hey. He's giving us that look. Say, come any closer, see what happens. I'll deal with you myself. Look at him. He's ready. He's ready to take charge of this herd. All right, he is coming out here now. So he's just still following tortoise pan and he's still still trailing. Apparently this is where Mawati was now, maybe about five minutes ago. He just went behind, he turned back. I'm just going to give it a bit of time because Mawati did cross over, so he might follow. I can see where he's going. He's going that way. He's coming straight towards us. 
Maybe this is where more Maybe he dragged the kill there. You never know. Well, that warthog is gone. Maybe even Hyena decided to grab that kill and uh, run off with it. Uh, you can see that it's not a happy, that's not a happy tortoise pan. Not a happy tortoise pan at all. Mm. Leopard warfare for the morning. Leopard warfare for the morning. Yeah, I know, dark man lover for sure. You can't get no more injuries from another leopard, but uh, that's just how leopards are, eh? you know? It's in there, it's built in their character, the instinct. Like, you know, if I'm territorial, no matter how many injuries I've got, I'm still gonna fight. Still gonna fight for my area, no matter what. All right, let's turn quickly. <sighs> He's up and down, up and down. He's all over. Oh, she's on the pole, eh? No, uh, that's right, but uh, by the time I move, he's going to be off the pole. So, my boy, my boy, then I'm in the way, yeah. Jason, very possible that Walter could have played dead and all of a sudden it ran off. Very possible. I mean, I can't see, we can't, there's no other signs of a Walter around. So, yeah. Very possible. And I've said it has happened before. It has happened before. All right, let's turn around here. <laughs> oh, my word. Ah, what a morning. <laughs> I'm just, I'm still perplexed about this morning. Completely. Completely. I think it's caught, caught all of us by surprise. Oh, he's going that way. So I'm going to go down this way. Along the fire break heading if a the is going there. Shungile fan, yes, thank you for I think I'm pouring myself. Uh, we've had a fantastic uh, surprise this morning, and uh, yeah, it was fantastic just to get, just, just to understand the story, you know, just understand what uh, these two males are about. And we've always been, I've been talking about this how many times, and I'm sure these guys have bumped into, it's not the first time, I'm sure these two guys, these two males have bumped into each other many, many, many a time, um, because we only see that very short uh, snippets of their lives. Um, and then at night time we are all sleeping and of course uh, leopards are doing what they need to do. Yep, he's, but tortoise pan's on a mission, eh? So now he's like, no, I'm not taking no, I'm not taking no for an answer. Yeah, I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm coming. Come and face, uh, come and face me. Come and face me. Oh, and now he's going straight that way. Oh, it does, yeah, even with, but that's leopards, huh? even with the injuries, they are still very brave. Okay, I'm gonna lose him here now. This is, this is gonna be way too thick. Yeah, I'm not even gonna, gonna yeah, he's here, but uh, it's, this is a wall. We are, we have hit a wall. Yeah, unfortunately, this rain roof, this pole, Always gets in the way, eh? Yep. Always. All 
All right, I feel that we need to let them be for a bit. Um, I cannot follow. I'm not, I cannot follow f further from here. Um, all we can do is try and listen out and all that. So I'm going to let it be, um, and hopefully we can follow up on them. I hear some growling. Ooh, wait, they're growling. Let's, they're both here. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, let's go. We're going to get three or four. Yeah, I don't think so. No, there's no, there's no way he's getting through there. But they're all growling at each other there. I think he's just bumped into more whitey. Ah! I don't know what that was. All right, I'm just looking exactly where, where they're growling from. All right, let's see if we can get in here. Um, I'm gonna try and get into um, port. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, let's go in here. No, there. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> Alright. We can't get in there. So it's just focusing on this tree, yeah. Yeah. Let's try. I was growling this side, eh? There was somewhere growling in here. Um, because you came through here. All right, Mpo, just watch your back. Oh, you're right there, Mpo. Yo, so what mission with this rain roof this morning? Mm. Growling in this spot, I'm just aiming for that tree because that's exactly where you're heading to. This tree, yeah. <whistles> All right, now, Gwen, I think we're gonna have to try and follow them, relocate on them somewhere else. This is getting way too thick, there's no ways. Oh, I Growling, you know. Yeah, I hear them. I hear some breathing happening here. Yeah, the people's trying to come in here. I just heard some breathing or something. It sounded like breathing or growling. Um, mm. Yeah, this is not going to happen. Let's see if we can get around here. Huh? It's somewhere here. It's somewhere here. Yeah, I know. They've definitely chosen the best of spots to go and hide here. Yeah. I'm going to quickly turn off here again. Right, I think, uh, Gwen, let's go back to, to Amakala. I think um, I just want to quickly just double check things here as well on the vehicle. That's possible. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
Shame they've all landed on that poor baby now. I think they <laughs> it's like a jungle gym. A buffalo jungle gym indeed. You can see that baby's a little bit older, starting to get the little bit little uh, uh, pins, the horns on its head. Oh, very aware of its surroundings. You can see looking around. Oh, you you are very adorable. You know that. Uh, yes, go find your mother. Best not stray too far away from her. Helen, not necessarily, but in when it comes to predators, yes. I wouldn't say all of them will take uh, responsibility for it. You know, you often find mothers are very protective over their own babies and nobody else's. But as a herd, when they are threatened by predators, they challenge the predators more. You know, so that's when you'll find that buffaloes will come back, say a calf has been snagged or something like that, or uh, an adult has been snagged, you'll find if the herd is close enough, they'll come to the rescue, try and push away those lions. Um, but in the herd, like, every, you know, in everyday life, you won't find other females caring for other offspring. Sometimes they don't even get to be, get close. Mothers end up chasing others away very quickly. And uh, oh, they get chased away very quickly and not really welcome to help in any way. I think it's only just when predators are present. Yeah, there are lots of babies around here. It's good expanding the herd's numbers. See the, the little youngster that was being harassed by all those red bull ox and you can see another youngster's bum on the end of the road. They're about to be interrupted. Very, very cool. So there's a lot of red bull ox pickers here. I'd say there's probably about just maybe under over ten at least. Because I've seen four sitting on one and I've seen another six sitting on someone else. Very calm, just feeding as they go. There was a little bit of a grunt of unhappiness earlier. Uh, that I heard from one of the, probably one of the females. Could well have been someone getting too close to her baby and her telling them to absolutely not get away from, get away from my baby. You may not. You'll find that these red bull ox pickers will hang around these buffalo pretty much all day now, um, as this is where they'll probably get majority of their food for the day. I mean, they play, there's plenty of it. There's lots of buffalo here, and each one needs a bit of grooming. Oh, there's another grunt. They're not very long grunts. Just a quick, and, you know, that's a enough to get the message across. We're gonna send you uh, back up to Chad to have a look at what he's doing up in Juma. Oh, welcome back everybody and it seems to now all be happening on Juma. Apparently there were some wild dogs that were just on the dam cam and they've run down twin dams road which is the road that i'm on earlier we came past there was a herd of impalas 
not far from where I am now but we're just gonna drive along this road and see if we are able to find those wild dogs I mean they do often like to use the the road to get from point A to point B so I'm hoping they are just running on the road but lots and lots happening I mean an amazing sighting happening with Cedric and Tortoise Pan, Mawati and the Warthog and now to get last minute wild dogs would just be spectacular and I've literally just driven up here so who knows where they've gone but we'll try and catch up There are tracks of them on the road here and impalas that have run. So they could be anywhere around. Impalas have all run that way. And I say the impalas are running just there's very deep imprints of them. <laughs> Leopard lover, you're saying go Chad, go. I really do hope we are able to find the wild dogs. I mean, being my, my favorite animal, it would be fantastic to end with them. And they can move huge distances in a very short amount of time. So I have picked up the pace just a little bit to see if we can catch up with them. So I'm holding thumbs for some wild dog action if there's nothing along this road I might drive on the other side of the drainage line just the all the impala tracks ran across the road that way and so those wild dogs may have followed those impalas Oof, I'm just hoping one of these corners I turn and there's the pack in front of us. One can only hope. <laughs> Cooksters, I also do hope that I can find some paws. Some wild dogs would be amazing. It has been a little bit quiet on my side this morning, but sometimes you have those days. I'm just glad Cedric has had uh, an amazing sighting with Tortoise Pan and Mulwati. And also you can't forget about Eric's lions up at, Am at Amakala. So I don't see any more tracks of these dogs on this road, but I am gonna go through the next drainage line. Uh, I'm going south of the road. The last tracks were a little bit further north from where I am. I'm just letting the uh, people know where we are currently. Cedric might be coming into the area. So we are at Chilapan now. The last tracks were north of Chilapan, going south along Twin Dams Road. There is a little wallow to our left hand side and sometimes wild dogs will go and wallow um, after they've been running to cool themselves off. So I just wanted to check there. There are still tracks of them on the road here. We are not far behind these dogs, those tracks are fresh. There's also hyenas that are running. Come on dogs, where are you? Be close by. Panda's saying that would be nice. Panda would be more than nice. <laughs> He's now saying that it would be amazing. Let's apologize to everybody for the slight break in picture. I am uh, trying to rush 
and see if we can find these wild dogs. Also, there might be a little bit of wind. If I did some long hair, the, my hair would be blowing in the wind right now. Come on, dogs, we're off. This, this, I just want to try and double check and see if there are any tracks of these wild dogs here. Just to make 100% sure where they have gone. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. Yeah, and I mean that. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's like a once in a blue moon uh, thing that just happened this morning. Uh, it's just um, it's like when they say all the stars align itself, and that's exactly what happened this morning. All the stars aligned itself with uh, a leopard catching a war dog, which I was talking about yesterday, which was so one of my best sightings. Uh, um, you know, to, to see. I know it sounds bad, but um, you know, it's just. All of a sudden, you got two male water, uh, two male leopards fighting over uh, this warthog. Plus, they're f fighting over the territory as well. So, yeah. Uh, doves. <laughs> Any doves? Uh, <laughs> knew it. <laughs> knew it. Oh, there you go. All right, let's see. Let's see. Where's uh, where's that little bee eater now?
All right, it seems like Ch uh, Chad is uh, trying to follow up on uh, the wild dogs for this morning, but unfortunately his signal has been a little bit up and down. Uh, we've got nice impalas here. What are they looking at? Those are looking a little bit wary of the surrounding. You can see they keep on looking that way. Eh? One or two of them. You can imagine we get wild dogs coming in here and killing an impala. Now we'll be like, wow, well, that's, uh, that's the morning done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, was, uh, it was quite a mission, getting through the thick stuff with all the action this morning and getting another vehicle in there. It was very, it was very tough, you know. So it's, it's one of those things where you feel like, uh, you know, when you got a, d when you when you DJing and you got like your three, four decks ahead of in front of you with the mixer board, and I, I felt like that's what was happening this morning. But uh, it felt like I was trying to mix uh, heavy metal with opera, with a little bit of rap and uh, maybe some uh, frozen music there all together. That's how it felt this morning because it was. Very chaotic at uh, at a moment at a time, um, but at least uh, the song sounded good at the end. Yeah. yeah. And especially when you're in the middle of a block. I mean, uh, I know that block. Philemon's Cutline and Zoe's. Jesse, what a day! Yes, what a Friday! I I will never forget this drive and so like Paul saying as well this is one of his best drives that, uh, that he's had uh, with Wild Earth and it's one of my best drives I've had with uh, just being as a guide uh, it has been which has just been a yoba it's been action-packed it's been surprising um, it had I was you know I don't we, we, I do sometimes like get excited with like and I get that excitement and I start shaking a little bit but both Paul and myself, we were actually looking at each other, we were showing each other's hands, and, and both of us were like shaking. It looked like uh, we were freezing. That's how, that's how excited we were. Um, so that excitement went re right through, the adrenaline, everything. So, well, you know, one of those things, you think, oh, no, I'll never see another sighting like that or, or something better. Never see it. You'll never see something better again. But trust me, all of a sudden you go out and you actually get something even better than that. So, yeah, make sure that you do join us, of course, this afternoon on our sunset safari. Maybe we get something more exciting. Oh, I don't, that'll be quite tough. Oh, let's go to Chad. Yes! <laughs> Success! We found the dogs and they're coming directly towards us. How amazing. So I can hear some other dogs off to our right hand side also. And I'm pretty sure that they went after those impalas that I spoke about a little bit earlier. Wow. Yes! Dogs! <laughs> Let me see if we can try and get one view. Oh, they're gonna go. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are coming towards the end of the drive, but let me see if we can get one more view of them running away. Panda's going to do his best, but thanks once again, everybody, for watching uh, another amazing sunrise safari as we watch these dogs run off into the distance. <laughs>